Today's video is brought to you by the Seeker Strength Road to Anywhere Back Squat Program. The Back Squat Program, as you probably know by now, is eight weeks long, two squat sessions per week. It includes all the accessory work, all the sets, reps, and loading you'll need to go and hit some massive numbers in the back squat. Welcome back to Seekistan. Today, we're going to have a quick chat about squat progressions, programming for the squat, and how you might want to program to get back to previous numbers. So in the last few weeks, uh, I've gotten back up to my kind of previous PV in the squat, uh, 500 pounds or 507 pounds, 230 kilos, basically. What? In the kind of preceding weeks to that uh, 230 kilo squat, there was a lot of questions and a lot of comments uh, talking about the kind of speed of progression of getting there, how quickly I got back to those numbers um, and kind of going for from... 170 kilos for some reps up to 230 kilos for very very easy singles so today what we're going to do is talk a small bit about that kind of training to get back or retraining to old numbers we're going to talk about the general structure of that program and what it looked like we'll go through the numbers uh, what sessions were hit on what dates and what weight sets and reps we did at those and then we'll just break it down a small bit as to if you were to get back to previous numbers how it might work well for you so the first thing is, this is a classic kind of block periodization piece. I did a prep phase for around two months. So most of May and June was spent doing a kind of squat prep phase. I was in a lucky position. My work capacity was quite high. Uh, so I'd been doing a lot of running training, a lot of kind of general GPP stuff and a lot of jujitsu training. So I had the ability to go back into squat sessions and do multiple sets of 10 um, quite easily at the time. So this started off early May doing sets of 10 at 100 kilos and basically what I do is I'd squat every kind of six or seven days just slightly less than once or sorry slightly more than once per week and then every week I'd add another five kilos or add another 10 kilos to those sets of 10s some weeks I might just add an extra set so starting off first week one set of one at 100 kilos if I had maxed out my squat right then, it probably would have been around 180 or 190 kilos, maybe for an ugly single. If I'd really pushed it, I might have gotten around 190 or 200 kilos for a single. So I spend most of May and June just doing 10s in the squat, just doing it kind of once a week or maybe a bit more than once a week. I was running a lot back then and a lot of longer, higher volume stuff. So the energy expenditure was quite high and also, I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to get injured far out from the, the event itself, right? So that's what the prep phase looked like. It was really, really focused on kind of like a slow start off, making sure I was happy with my motor pattern, making sure I wasn't uh, kind of developing any bad habits or making sure any previous injuries weren't rearing their heads. So obviously, the leg injury last year at the, the squat and run attempt was something that I had been feeling earlier on in the training cycle. So earlier on in the year when I had been squatting I kind of felt that uh, so I was making sure none of that was uh, impeding me too much I was making sure I was happy with my technique the other thing is this was very concurrent with the run training so I talked about it being block periodized and this being a prep phase for the squat it's very much a prep phase for the run as well so 5k's multiple times per week 3k's multiple times per week and then a quite high volume overall of running and quite low speeds, it must be said as well. So we weren't really on the track. If I was on the track, I'd be on the track kind of mul maximum. I'd be on track once per week. Um, and that would be doing some 400s and 800s and things like that. But it was, uh, it was very much concurrent. Prep phase for running, prep phase for squatting at the same time. It must be noted as well that squat is absolutely in no way a priority in this prep phase. It's very much kind of kicked to the side. And I'm just preparing myself to be able to squat in July and August. So we're going to go to the blackboard now and take a look at what the actual numbers look like uh, for July and August. You'll get an idea for the progressions. Right, so we're back once again at the blackboard. Everyone's favorite place. As I said, at this point of the year now, this is starting off July. The prep phase is done, right? So May and June is over. We've done lots of 10s. We've built up a lot of volume. We've built up a kind of a right to go a small bit heavier with the squats. So starting off here, first week in July or end of first week in July, we have a set of six at 160 kilos. So right now at this point, that set of six is pretty heavy, right? It's a it's a good set of six. I'm happy with it, but it's by no means uh it's by no means a set of six where I'm gonna think I'm gonna go for 200 in a week, right? 
up next then and this is a week later exactly a week later it's 190 kilos for a single and this is where the kind of heavier so going from moderate volume and heavy single afterwards moderate volume heavy single afterwards these sessions have around five or six days in between them so we go from 160 kilos for six up to 190 kilos for a single following on from that we keep it at 160 kilos the week afterwards and we do it for eight reps and then after that we go to 200 kilos for a double now these are aggressive jumps these aren't jumps you'd be making if it was your first time doing it but by all means if you're getting back to the same weights for the fifth or sixth time um, and not hitting a PB, but being in no way salty about not hitting a PB, uh, this is what you do. So going 160, 160 kilos for six, then 190 for a single, 180 kilos for, four, for eight, and then 200 for a double. After that then, going back to 190 kilos, which we did for a single, round a week and a half previously this time we do it for a set of five the next session on from that is a triple at 200 kilos so going 190 kilos for five then three reps at 200 and now we go into the specific stuff so the kind of moderate training volume is done now this is all peaking sets so it's 210 for a single 220 for a single 210 for a single 220 for a single and this is the point the end of the sword up here this is just practicing with the heavier weights so what you'll have seen there and how this might be different from standard programming um if you were getting up to these numbers for the first time the overall volume is much much lower now that's a factor of retraining i'm not really kind of pushing anything crazy hard to get there i'm basically just getting back in a previous shape and uh, there's a lot of muscle memory there there's a lot of physiological adaptation that's happened there a lot of gene transcription that's happened there which is basically just being kind of reignited those genes that might have been dormant for the last few months or the last few years are just being kind of turned on again activated again and then i'm getting myself in shape to get there but in terms of the difficult things that are uh, that take time in terms of strength progression like actual hypertrophy actual alteration of neural pathways uh all of these things that take a long time and take a lot of training volume to to elicit that response those things don't really have to be done the second time around or in this case the fifth or sixth time around you know i've squatted 230 kilos now multiple times it's less than 10 times but it's over the course of the last kind of five or six years i've gone up to these heavy weights multiple times and I have these road marks or these milestone weights in my head, right? So most of the time, if I'm getting up around these weights, I want to do 180 kilos for around a set of 10. Now, if that's a set of eight, then that's grand. If it's a set of four or five and I'm struggling, it's probably too low, you know? Uh, the other milestones I'd always look for is 210 kilos for a double, 200 kilos for somewhere between three reps and six reps. Uh, I'd like... If I was to go heavier with my squat in the future, up towards 240 or 250, I definitely want to look for 200 kilos for 10 reps. And I think that's that's kind of where my squat would need to be in the preparatory phases or the, the moderate loading phases uh, for me to get up slightly higher. What you have to imagine as well is that this isn't squatting for the sake of squatting. This is squatting for the sake of 50% of the total challenge. And in my case, it's very, very easy to do the squat. The squat is, is so much easier for me than the run is. So this takes almost no training priority. This takes, of those timber blocks that you might take your recovery capital to be, this takes like one of those small timber blocks and the vast amount of my training volume is in running. So when you see me doing one single or one triple or one set of five or one set of six, that's not the best way to really be driving your numbers hard. But in my case, when I knew the squat was there and I knew the squat was quite easy and I was basically able to look back on last year and see, okay, I'm hitting these milestones, the barbell is moving well, I feel good, I'm happy with my technique, there's no reason for me to put any more in there. But if you're a powerlifter approaching competition or a weightlifter knowing you needed to hit certain numbers so your snatch and clean and jerk would be strong enough, or you might be an athlete in their off season trying to really bump their numbers up, this wouldn't be sufficient for you. This is just somebody who knows they're going back to a number they've been to multiple times before. They have a lot of other stuff going on and this is how I get there. So if this is something you're interested in or something you've experienced with, I'd love to know your, your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, if it's something you want to hear more about, just ask me questions. I'll do my very best to get back to you. 
I hope you've enjoyed the series of this running and squatting training in general. We'll be back with some slightly different training vlogs very, very soon. And as always, thanks for watching.